Make sure you check out our online store where we work with our graphic designer to create stunning garment and product designs that feature a wide variety of aircraft types such as British fighters, World War II aircraft, American bombers, Russian fighters and much more. You can pick your favourite designs and personalise any items within our Redbubble store that range from clothing right the way through to stationery. All of our designs feature our logo so you can show your support for the channel while getting a quality product. You can head to our website aircrewinterview.tv and click store or go to redbubble.com forward slash people forward slash AC interview. Thank you and enjoy. Did you have to take control of the hawk for a student struggling in low level? Yeah, so that, that, uh, that, that story about flying into cloud at low level, that's the only time I had to take control uh, of a student uh, because oh. something dangerous was happening. I did take control from one other student at low level. Um, just because, and, and this is the thing, he's another great guy. He was my first pet project. He was, he really got his teeth into air combat and, and uh, air defense, uh, but he was struggling at a low level. But you have to pass every aspect of the, of the course. And the reason he struggled at low level was he'd done some of his training in the United States where they'd only flown set routes in beautiful weather and, and such like that. So he wasn't used to flying in the UK where, <laughs> you know, the weather was always a bit dodgy. So, um, but what he did was because of that, he didn't use the correct techniques and the correct techniques that we use for uh, low level navigation are it's on a work cycle so you have your map and there's the route what you don't do is thumb your way up the uh, up the map uh, like you might do on a road atlas um, you look at what the next event is going to be and the next event might be six minutes away it's a turning point well it's pointless looking at your map for six minutes because the turning point's six, seven, 42 miles away, okay? Uh, so you're not gonna be able to see it. So the technique is, right, in five minutes, I'm gonna pick the map up again. You put the map away, you fly on heading, pick something to fly towards, but now what you do with your head is, you are looking out all over the place because there's tons and tons yeah. of aeroplanes and you're gonna crash into them. So he didn't look out, he just wasn't, he was so desperate to see the turning point that he never looked out. And I think on a leg of four minutes, I told him 12 times to look out and, um, uh, and he didn't. And uh, as we went around the turning point, we had a bit of a closer board with another hawk but that, that happened all the time in, in Wales. It was no big deal, but he didn't see that hawk. Right. And I, th I think that was, uh, that was, it just blew it for me then because I could see him failing the course mm. and we wanted him on the yeah. front line. And so I grabbed control of the uh, aeroplane, barreled us up to 1500 feet and just uh, raised, uh, mm. orbited around a bit. And my God, I, I went through him like a dose of salts. I mean, it was really? the worst bit of instruction I've ever done in my life. But I was so, I was so frustrated that he was she gonna fail. Well. Yeah, yeah I, I think I even, you know, there's a blast screen between the front yeah. and back. I, I think I was even banging on the blast screen. Um, well, he dropped, we dropped into low level. I'd never seen lookout like it, Mike. His head was on an absolute <laughs> swivel. But we didn't, we didn't hear a, certain, a single turning point or either of the targets. And he knew it was a failed, uh, uh, a failed trip. But that, th I, I took control, just born out of frustration because I just wanted him to do the right things yeah. and, uh, and, and scrape through the low level phase, uh, the final attack phase. And he was gonna go Tornado F3. But he certainly wasn't gonna go ground attack. I, and maybe he looked a little bit like I did through, through training. Uh, in the end, he went Tornado F3 um, and, and he was overjoyed with it and so were we. His second tour, uh, he got an exchange with the US Navy flying F-14s off the carrier. How would you compare the RAF QFI system to the US, if you have any details there? From I do and, and don't, don't take it that I'm saying this because I'm RAF and therefore I'm invested in, in what we did. I, our training system is, is, has always been world class, it's always been world leading uh, and I've seen a number of training systems and I've been through the American uh, one myself. I went through the Navy and Marine Corps one. Um, ground school, the way we teach ground school, we have experts in front of you teaching the subjects. Um, my American experience at ground school was I was sitting in front of a computer screen just clicking a mouse and uh, slideshows uh, with uh, audio tapes. I think I had two um, 
actual lectures in ground school for the whole of the F-18 oh, really? in Hornet. Yeah, it was, <laughs> it, it just sucked the, sucked the joy out of you. Uh, simulator training, exactly the same. Uh, we had the same kind of concept that we'll put experts in simulators. Um, so people that have flown the aeroplane, hopefully, or flown similar types. So the uh, sim instructors at um, uh, uh, El Toro, where I went through the F-18, they were, they were great. They really were. They were all reservists. Um, but the actual flying training itself, um, bearing in mind I was only on an OCU in the, in the States for the F-18, it was torturously slow. Um, it took forever to mm. do the trips that I needed to do. Whereas traditionally our training system and OCUs are bang, 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 bang. Now I, I, uh, I teach human factors to young air crew coming into the Air Force now. Some of those pilots are going across to the States to do um, a program called NJEPT, which I'm sure you've, uh, you've heard of, the European NATO fast jet thing at Shepard Air Force Base. And they fly the um, Talon. Uh, Talon, isn't it? It's like an F-5, you know. Um, they're, the way they teach there, I've heard, is like old school 1980s RAF, oh, really? where people fail lots of trips. It's right. all very, you know, uh, disciplined and, and, and stuff like that. Whereas I think the RAF system has, has, has morphed more into, you know, squeezing the most amount of juice out of an individual. How do we do that? Well, we don't do that by, you know, doing old school, just shout at them and tell them they're crap until they get better. I, I do a disservice to, uh, to it, that's a broad brush thing, yeah. but that's, that's generally the two extremes that, uh, that we're looking at. What would I take if I was going through it again? I'd take the RF system every, every day of the year. It's why we uh, end up selling aeroplanes to other nations, because it opens up our training system uh, uh, to them. If you enjoyed the channel and our video content and would like to support us, you can do this in a couple of ways. You can sign up to our Patreon site, which is a monthly subscription to one of our four tiers, each giving you something different from early access interviews up to exclusive unseen footage. There's also the option of a one-off donation via PayPal, which allows you the option to donate an amount of your choice. Both options really help to keep this channel going and to continue putting out regular content for you good folk. So please take a look at aircrewinterview.tv forward slash donate and I thank you in advance. Thank you and enjoy.